welcome back to the Souls Like a Spotlight series. I'm here with Cher today, and we're going to learn all about her story. By the way, there's everyone's here, like, watching. Yeah. <laughs> and we made them turn off the sound, which makes me really sad. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but anyways, here with Cher at her place. We're at Mount Vernon, and we're just going to, like, hop right into it. Yeah. Cool. So I've known Cher since I was a writer, and, like, Cher just is all about good vibes, positive vibes. Like, anybody I know who takes Cher, like, loves you. I mean, just because, like, she, like, if you take her class, like, you understand, like, the energy that she creates, and, like, she's such a dope person, like, in and out of the classroom. <laughs> We're just gonna hop right into it, so, like, say, like, who you are, like, where you're from, like, all that good stuff. Yeah, well, um, my name is Cher. I've been teaching at SoulCycle for about three and a half years, and I'm originally from the San Francisco Bay Area, but I started SoulCycle in New York, and then I taught in San Francisco, and then I moved back to New York, and then I moved to D.C., so, yeah, we're gonna get all into that. Don't worry. And I'll tag all of her stuff below so you can follow her on Instagram, all that fun stuff. She's a fantastic dancer. She's good at makeup, all that stuff. But we'll get into that. I'm having some noises going on here, so we're just gonna start a record. How did you find SoulCycle? Um, SoulCycle found me right. way back in the day, like 2014. Um, they sent me and a whole bunch of my teammates. I was dancing on the Brooklyn Nets dance team, and they just wanted to see if we wanted to become instructors because they were looking for a lot of dancers at the mm -hmm. time. I went through the Solar Crew program for about, I want to say six months, and then I auditioned. Wow, that's crazy. Well, well wait, can you like talk? Yeah, yes, yeah, very rare. Can you talk about your first class because it's like one of my favorites? Oh <laughs> my god, my very first class is so funny. So I took a class before I was in the Solar Crew program because I wanted to like know. Right. So I signed up. It was in 2014. Halloween, 9.30, right. Union Square with Danny. I miss you, Danny. 9.30. 9.30 in the morning. Oh, I thought it was at night. No, I used to teach the 9.30 p.m. at Union yeah, Square. Yeah, Catherine was talking about the last week. I was like, that was a thing. I used to teach the hell out of that. That's amazing. Um, but it was 9.30 in the morning on Halloween, and it was such a busy, busy class. I just walked in, I signed my waiver, and I go to my bike, and I didn't really know where it was. I found it. I did not know that you were supposed to adjust things so I right. just brought all of the settings down. Right, right. I, did, yeah, right. I didn't lock anything into place. I didn't even know that you were supposed to clip in. Right. So my legs were just kind of like going like this and at one point Danny comes up to me and is like, get up! And I was like, no! I'm not getting up! And then like third song in, like one leg clipped in and I was like, oh shit! Like let me find the other way to like get this going. And then I tried to stand up and the lady next to me is like looking at me crazy. And then at the end of class, I am trying to get out of my bike and I can't. My bike goes like diagonally because I'm like trying to unclip <laughs> for the life of me. Um, so I ended up just like leaving my shoes in the bike right. and walking out. And I was like, oh, so this is still like, oh, cool. But it was an awesome experience. Like it was, he is like the light show king and I was enjoying every moment of it. I just didn't know what I was doing. Right. I just remember when you told me your very first story, how like he came over to you and was like, get up and you're like, like I refuse. Right, I was like, I'm standing <laughs> not up. standing up. <laughs> Physically, I don't know how it's possible right now. I forgot who it was, it was Danny. Okay, yes. that's amazing. Um, so with that, because I'm curious, like, when did you decide you wanted to become a soul cycle instructor? Or was it because they recruited you? Like, I don't know. To me, I was still, I was working in the dance industry, so it just kind of felt like another job, like, mm -hmm. that I was offered, because the way that they approached me was also through my agency. So they went to my dance agency and then my agent talked to me about it. And then I took my first class as a solo recruit with Melanie Griffith mm -hmm. and I sobbed my ass off. And I was just like, oh, right. Like she set me up on my bike. She made sure everything was good. And then she like just taught the hell out of her class. And I sat there and I was like, oh, you can make someone feel like this. Yeah. That's insane. Mm -hmm. And so I kept taking instructor, 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 and I, just kind of like fell in love with it. Yeah. And I was like, I want to make a room feel the way that I did. Mm -hmm. And then I think that's like similar to so many people. I stories. feel like, I, as you're saying that, I feel like a lot of people resonate with that. Yeah. Especially if you take Mel. I mean, like, she played like Dear Mr. President, and I was just um, like, you can get it. Like, whatever yeah. you want, Melanie Griffith, like, here's my soul. Yeah. I'm cycling it for you. Yeah. She, gosh. Shara's class is so fun, and like, What's the word I want to use to describe your class? She'll do like guilty pleasure rides. You're like known for that. Did your class have like lit, like nitty, like mm -hmm. I love the way she talks. Anyways, um, what's one of your favorite parts of class? Um, it doesn't have to be a specific song, like maybe a moment. Yeah. Or it could be like a time in class. Like, um, There's so many it different, changes. it changes with every single class. Like some song, some classes I'm like, first song, right. bam, like 
it's 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 going it's going and then other times i'm obsessed with like the moment um in between the soulful and the time that we go home between the last two songs okay, yeah, yeah. it's kind of like my favorite moment because we're transitioning from like you just came down from this thing and then we're gonna bring it right back up yeah. and then take it home and you feel this crazy yeah. great feeling. And then other classes, it's my favorite time is a stretch when I like turn the music off yeah. and we just like shit talk for like three <laughs> minutes while we're trying our best to stretch. I love that. So it depends on like the room because every time mm -hmm. I teach a class it's different. It is different. No one has said the stretch either. The stretch is like secretly my favorite because I get to like be like, hey, Tina, like what's going on? Yeah. Tell me what's up. Yeah. No, that's so you too. Um, okay. So what's a song you play over and over again without getting sick of? I mean, I know there's like a bazillion, but like one that always hits and that's like. Every single time, let's think. I feel like it might be. Um, Big Bang by Big Sean at the moment. Okay. Because like once you hear like the first couple things, everyone's like, oh, crap. Yeah. no, 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 I take it back. It is not Big Bang. I know exactly what song it is, and it's Back That Ass That by Juvenile. I'm like, oh, where are you from? <laughs> I was going to say, I feel like you, there's something. No. Okay. That makes back sense. That Ass Up by Juvenile. If you hear from the 99 to the 2000s, I don't care what you're going through, you're fine. Yeah. In that room when the song goes on. That's amazing. Oh my gosh, that's so good. I feel like it's more like your vibe. Not that Big Sean's not. Right. Big Sean's throwback like, like that. Oh my god. Yeah. yeah. Throwback. Give for sure. Thousands forever. Yes. Um, what's your favorite move on the bike? I know it's on the app, but. Um, what is my favorite move? I, mean, I love me a good tap back. Like, right. there's nothing more than that. I like a tap back in like different variations of it, like a double, mm -hmm. a four count tap back. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't. As weird as I love to dance, yeah. choreography isn't like my favorite part of the class. Mm -hmm. My favorite part is like the resistance mm -hmm. and like all that fun stuff. Yeah, that is. That's interesting you say that because I always think of your class as being more resistance heavy. Yeah, like you know. I know everyone expects like you're gonna get a full dance routine, and sometimes you do, and most of the time you don't. <laughs> yeah. Well, you have to like keep it separate, you know. Right. Um. Okay. This might be a little harder. So, what three words to describe your class? Good vibes only. I'm kidding. <laughs> Secretly, yeah. I mean, you can like put that. On. I know. Good, good vibes. vibes only. Good vibes. Um, energetic and freedom. I just want people to have like the freedom to do whatever yeah. they need to. That's a good one. Like I'm not looking for a class where everyone kind of looks like they're in this militant army and like they all are riding the same. Like mm -hmm. I don't give a damn if you take a seat. Like that's mm -hmm. my favorite part. Is like if yeah. someone's taking a seat but they have a smile on their face, I'm proud. Yeah. Like I'm good. Mm -hmm. You don't have to fit into any mold when you're in my class. And I think I think that's like perfectly said. Yeah. I couldn't like put that into words, but that's so right. Her class is super inclusive, yeah. and I feel like so many different types of people take your class mm -hmm. because of that. Yeah, I just want you to feel like there's a space. Like if you're like me and it's your first class and you don't realize that you're supposed to clip in. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Okay, yeah. I remember what it felt like yeah. to do that, and I just want to make sure that like if I could do that moment over again, I would do it right. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Who is one artist that someone's definitely gonna hear in your class? Oh, I mean, obviously this, this is really oh, I know, this is rough. Probably, you're most definitely gonna hear Drake. Drake is gonna happen, depending on if you're in your feelings or if you feel rowdy. Mm -hmm. um, this is probably gonna happen. Yeah, I can see that. This is my girl. I think of the Ying Yang twins. Oh my God, Ying Yang <laughs> twins for life. Like anybody from the year that made like a hit record from like 2000 and 2004, mm -hmm. Anybody there is gonna be in my class. Like, mm -hmm. I don't think I've had a class besides a theme ride that I haven't played in arms for the two classes. Yeah, I mean, that's amazing, and I need to know your playlist. Um, but that's that's definitely true. Yeah, I can see that for sure. I like for, like Little John's in there all the time. Yeah, yeah. Twins. like yeah. Ludacris is in there. Yes, Missy Elliott. Missy, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see all those. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can name a few. That's fine. What's one thing your riders gonna know about you? Uh, it's so funny because I just told them this and I've never told anybody oh, really? this. I told my class, my 5.30 class yesterday, when I was in high school, okay. I applied for that MTV show called Made. Oh my gosh. Amazing. And I got to like the interview and I was trying to be made from a cheerleader to a rapper. <laughs> Stop. I didn't Wait, get I didn't hit. hit. That's amazing. No. Um, sadly. And I didn't realize, I didn't, it was like word vomit when I told them, I was like, I didn't mean to tell you guys that. That's embarrassing. Wait, that's amazing. I wanted it so and bad. And you were living in, in California. Yeah. Uh huh. Oh my God, that's, that's. I wanted to be a rapper. That's good stuff. Maybe some. Maybe someday. <laughs> Wait, what are you? Twenty. 
26. 26, yeah. yeah. I mean, we're basically the same right. Okay, so what inspires you most about this job? Um, I think the people, obviously. Um, the way that you can relate to someone by simple, like doing a simple task like running a bike that doesn't move. Mm -hmm. uh, or like being able to like open a door to have conversations with people that I might not have right. conversations with on a normal basis. Mm -hmm. And I think the most inspiring thing is you see this group of people and they're all in this room and it's dark and they're all working the same way. Mm -hmm. um, and they're all from different walks of life. Like we'll have like a Supreme Court justice or somebody that's like doing a part-time job or there's someone that's like a college student or someone who has like a family of like five kids. And it's just like in that room, you guys are all the same. Mm -hmm. We're all doing the same thing. We're all equal. There's no hierarchy in here. And I'm like, that's what inspires me the most. Cause like sometimes in a crazy world, you have a place that everyone's on the same playing field. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's so nice. Yeah. I feel like everybody, like, or most people I've asked, like, that's their answers, like, the people, the riders, mm -hmm. but everyone justifies it in a different way, which yeah. is really cool to hear. So what's your go-to thing to do on your day off? Oh, my God. <laughs> it depends. Sarah has a good time. <laughs> um, if you ever take my 9.30 survivor on Sunday, you know what I like to do on the day off. Um, no, I usually, well, I take, like, five naps. Like, yeah. to be honest, I, like to sleep, yeah. I sleep so much, and then uh, usually I'll, like, go out with my friends or go to dinner or grab drinks, mm -hmm. like, or multiple drinks. Um, <laughs> I think actually mostly what I do on my day off, like I'm doing it tomorrow, I go, I take a bus up to New York. Oh yeah, or I take, New York? Yeah, I'm going to tomorrow. Oh, so yeah. yeah, I'm either drinking, sleeping, or in New York, or all of those in New York. Yes, I love that. Drinking, sleeping, New York. That sounds like a fabulous day it's off. It's so great. I it's love just it. so easy to get out there for a day. Do you take the train? I take the bus. You take the bus yeah. and it's way cheaper. Way cheaper. Okay, um, what's one misconception that you think people have about school cycle? Um, that it's, okay. Everyone thinks it's, it's a cult. Mm -hmm. I get that. I understand. Trust me, if you're, if you're thinking that it's a cult, I understand. But. I also think that they think that it's like this exclusive members only group and it's like the most not and I think that's my biggest like goal in my classroom to make sure that it doesn't feel exclusive but like right. everybody feels seen and like everybody feels welcome it doesn't matter what you do or what you believe in or your political views or anything like come enjoy it um, and that it's not just about a workout I'm like mm -hmm. I tell people that all the time in class like if you came here for a workout, check that off your list already because you're gonna get that. Yeah. Look for something more than just that. Ooh, I like that. Yeah. Because I'm like, you're gonna get it. If you do what I ask you to do, then you're gonna get the workout in. You know, I think about that sometimes and I do think that like, there are riders who do come just for that. Mm -hmm. Because like then when we get all like solely and I'm like, is, am I like not touching some of these? You know what I mean? I think about that. I'm like, am I not touching some of these people who are literally here just to sweat? But like you said, like I feel like anybody who comes to Seoul kind of knows that right. it's more than just. It's just being open enough and having the mm -hmm. space to to feel okay enough to go past like the superficial right. idea of a workout class. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's the biggest misconception. And I think on the other side of that, people think that we're just like these hippy dippy things. I'm like, no, it's a crazy great workout, yeah. and every single class is different, and every single instructor is different. And I have to give the DC market mm -hmm. such credit because I think we have some of the strongest and like various types of classes mm -hmm. in one region that I've ever been in. Really? Yeah. I mean, I have. I've literally only been here in New York, so like I don't. I've been to like a lot of different places, mm -hmm. and like. We have such a great mix of different classes. So whatever you're in the mood for, you have it here. I guess that is true. Mm -hmm. I guess that is really true because I think about the different. Yeah, that is true. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, think that we're strong here. Right. So strong. I was like, for anybody who doesn't think DC is a strong market, come down, take four classes, and tell me how you feel. That's it. Preach. That's it. Brandon. Yeah, we're talking to you. <laughs> Even if you're not watching this, I was like, I will send it to him opinion what do you think set soul cycle apart which may be kind of what we already touched on yeah um i think the brand itself is super elevated mm -hmm. um what julian elizabeth established was such an authentic and genuine idea mm -hmm. of like creating a community of creating an elevated brand for boutique fitness that it just carries throughout every single part of it from mm -hmm. the front desk to the instructor, to the class, to the cleaning staff, to everybody that's involved in it. Mm -hmm. It is such a community inside, so it 
make sense of it trickles outside mm -hmm. like we all talk about the community and I think it's it's seen if you spend time to talk to the front desk if you spend time talking to your instructor mm -hmm. or you spend time giving your like cleaning staff a high five mm -hmm. when you see them like cleaning up the bathroom it's just like simple things like that mm -hmm. you'll notice how intertwined and how much of family we really are I was explaining this to my boyfriend last week that it really is like a culture mm -hmm. and it's what they created mm -hmm. and like that's why everyone's bonds are so like even if I'm not like super tight with other instructors here it's like you have something right and like the right like you said if the riders buy into it like they have friends outside of here exactly and I, I've been to a lot of different I've taught at a lot of different fitness spaces I've mm -hmm. taken a lot of different things and it's always about the workout and I think what makes it so special here is that we as instructors, they, they weren't looking for fitness instructors when mm -hmm. they were looking for um, like soul cycle instructors. They're looking for good people because mm -hmm. you can teach anybody how to ride a bike. You can mm -hmm. teach anyone how to teach. Which is like how you were. Yeah. Was like I had never taught a fitness class mm -hmm. before this. Um, and so when you find good people to teach these classes, it's noticing the ride on bike 62 in the back and you're like, everyone would see that and be like she's sitting down why are you cheering her on is it because she added way more resistance than she did last week having the freedom to tell them like you can sing along it's not that serious i start every single yeah. one of my classes telling people it's not that serious your bike isn't gonna move mm -hmm. your bike isn't going anywhere so whatever you need to do in the spot that you're in do it mm -hmm. and i think that's what makes this place so special like we don't have like crazy hard rules for you to follow mm -hmm. just have fun just don't bring your phone into class don't bring your phone into class <laughs> And turn your Apple Watch on th theater mode. Is that what it's called? Theater mode. I've taught people. Oh. You swipe up and you hit theater mode. And you swipe back I, down. Oh my. The I've given tutorials. The watch epidemic. It's like fine, but sometimes it's like super bright at a really not great time. When I'm like, be the best person you can be, and then it's like, bing! <laughs> yeah, I know. Rather say one thing, just one thing away from your class, what do you want to be? Can be a feeling, just one thing when they're like, when I leave Cher's class, like, um, I feel or I'm just be a good person. Yeah. <laughs> like have like be happy. Like it's okay to like mess up. It's okay for things not to be perfect. Just be good. Be happy. Yeah. Like yeah. Everything's gonna be fine. So you just want people to like be good, vibes. good people when they leave. <laughs> I just want you to feel good vibes before you leave the room. Yeah. Have it tattooed on you for a reason. Wait, where is it? It's here. Oh, oh my head. Um, what's the best advice you would give to a new rider? Um, forgive yourself. That's good. Forgive yourself and observe and just like take it for what it is. Um, I think a lot of times when anybody goes into something new, we want so badly to control everything around us so that it comes out as perfectly as we want it to. Mm -hmm. And my advice is like, don't do that. Yeah. Just like go in with zero expectations um, and just kind of like ride the wave and take everything that you possibly can mm -hmm. and understand that like, it takes time like everybody else. Yeah. Like everything in your life is gonna take time. So just like forgive yourself for the mistakes and like laugh about it and go for it. Yeah. Like if I determined my soul cycle career based off of my first class, yeah. I would be That's so true. <laughs> it would be non existent. This is like another thing that I talk about with people. You are a professional dancer and the beat was something and that's why some people they're like, I have rhythm, I whatever. I'm like it's different it's different <laughs> because for, like as a dancer I listen to beats as like different and intricate ways like it's like it's like a one and two and three and four instead of a one two one two yeah. one two mm -hmm. and I'm like but yeah I didn't know how to ride on beat until like week two into training <laughs> it happens I'm not kidding I love that I love that. I love that. I love that I love that though because like like I said you are a dancer and it like just shows that people and like when we talked about, I talked about this with Jonas or Kathleen, but it's like athletes, they come in the room and they they assume like, oh, I'm going to be able to do this because I'm in shape, because I'm athletic. Yeah. And it's like, hold your horses. Right. Like, this is a totally different ballgame in this room. 1,000%. And I'm just like, oh, and then like when it clicks, it clicks. It's mm -hmm. done. It's like yeah. in you and you can't right. not do it. I'm like, it's great. But until that happens, like forgive yourself. Yeah, I will be forgiving. That's Have really fun. Good. Have fun, yeah. Have so much fun. How do you stay motivated in this job even when you're not motivated yourself? Like, Woo! so how do you show up on days where you're like, people ask that all the time too. Uh -huh. It's like, I got how it. do you show up for other people when you don't even want to show up for yourself sometimes? Mm -hmm. 
Trust me, I go through that all of the time. So, so many more times than people would realize. And I think it's the feeling of like walking in the door and like just seeing people that genuinely want to be there. Mm -hmm. And like, you've already established something. I think the putting in the work pays off in the long time because when you've made connections with people, when you've made um, relationships with people, especially your writers or the front desk or whoever's in the building, it helps you stay motivated when you show up because you're like, I know you, I love you, and you've told me your story, and I was like, I genuinely want to be here for you. Mm -hmm. And so I, I also think on the other side of that, like on the mechanical side of it, I was, I'm a performer, mm -hmm. and so like something happens in me when I press play, mm -hmm. or something happens to me when I walk in the room, mm -hmm. and it's on. Like you can see me taking a nap in the office, and 30 seconds later I'm on the microphone, just like it's amazing, ready, yeah. Um, and so it's just I don't know. It, that's a very tough question. It is. is. It is. And there's some days know. where I don't have things to say, I'm like. People like sometimes come to my class and like want to hear me preach in those days where I don't have anything to say, so I don't say anything. I don't know if that's why people come to my class. I'm still very new, but like <laughs> I like you like want to, and then I I stop myself because I'm like if I have nothing that I feel yeah. like we're just gonna work hard right. and ride. And I'm like I you're still getting something. I like pride myself on trying to be as real and like authentic as I possibly can, and some days that just means like showing up. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that's really, really hard. And mm -hmm. so um, sometimes that's just what we talk about. I don't have like a philosophy lesson yeah. for you today. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's just like on the microphone, you know what? I'm just glad you're here. Mm -hmm. Like thank you for being here. And then it usually turns into something. Right. And it's something, you know what I mean? How early do you, you teach? 7, 7 a.m. So, so like I have like 6 a.m. And it's like you wake up and you're like, oh my gosh. Like in your mind, it is like, oh, I have to go to work right now. Mm -hmm. So like you have no choice but to get up. But like you said, the second I walk in, and then you start to see the people who like show up for those early classes. You're like, oh, this is right. Okay. And it's just like those hugs and like the. I think that's so important for instructors to to be there during a check in to, mm -hmm. to be able to like see people and like feed off of their energy. And I think that's what gets me going in a morning class mm -hmm. because it's tough. Yeah, it's an exchange of energy. Like they showed up, mm -hmm. so do you, so do I. Mm -hmm. I know. It's like I always say this to my to my friends. I teach my best class hungover. Yeah. Best classes always you don't think. hungover. You just do, right? Yeah. Like, yeah and like, it's kind of like, you know when you're on a team, I used to play volleyball when I was like, uh, mm -hmm. a kid. I, when you're tired, I used to be a cheerleader too, when you're tired, in your head you think everyone else is. And so you have to step it up to rise to their mm -hmm. level. Mm -hmm. Or like, when you're tired, if you're running in a group of people, you are only as strong as the weakest one. So mm -hmm. you start picking yourself back up because mm -hmm. of everybody else that's around you. And I'm like, it's a team in there. Mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not me and my team. It's We're all here together. So yeah. like, I'm going to step it up because you guys stepped it up. Right. And I, I was actually talking to my class about that the other day. Like, I was like, I was in a bad mood. And I don't, I mean, I feel like you go in very good vibe. I feel like I'm pretty like positive energy when I'm in class. And sometimes you just have a shitty day. Mm -hmm. And I was in there and I was like, guys, like, I was like, I'm not going to pretend like I'm like in a great mood. Like, let's just do this. And I was like, this isn't, I was like, I show up because of you and you guys push me. And I, th I don't think the writers always realize that because they see us like on this podium and like leading them. And like, yeah, like we're leading the workout and all that great stuff. But it's like, we couldn't do it without oh, them working that? hard. Like, zero. I literally tell them all the time. I was like, I would be unemployed if you guys weren't here. Like, I'd be <laughs> broke. I still am. But like, I would be like really broke if you weren't here. I know. It's crazy. But that, it's a really hard question to answer. It's like, so how hard. do you stay motivated? It's like, what? I, like, and I talk to people all the time. Same. My soulful moments usually aren't anything philosophy based or anything. It's literally a conversation. It's like what's going on in your life. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like, I just had a phone call with my best friend. Literally, that's what I say on the microphone. Mm -hmm. I'm like, my best friend, I told him this sucks or something. And then he'll tell me an answer. And I'm like, that's how I stay motivated. It's like, keep the connections that you have. Mm -hmm. Good. So name two people who've been super influential on your soul cycle journey. So it could be somebody who supported you or somebody in the soul cycle world. Or one is my... Best friend in the entire world. His name is Rob. And wait, the one with the handshake? The one with the handshake. Wait, you should send me that and I'll put it in. It was the coolest handshake in the entire send world. Send it to me. I'll, I'll um, He is one of my best friends since I was like 14 years old. Okay. And he's seen every single journey, whether it was me auditioning for my very first pro dance team, to me moving across the country, to me doing everything, and, and the soul cycle journey. And he's the person that reminds me of 
why I want to do this because I told him when I was 15 years old that all I want to do in this world is, is to help people. Mm -hmm. And so anytime I'm like, I hate it, I'm done, I'm tired, my body hurts, why am I doing this? He said, because you want to help people. And he's like the best person in the world. I could actually cry talking about him, but I won't. He's the best person. Love you, Rob. I love Rob, and I don't know Rob. <laughs> but I love like my friends like that. You know he's what I mean? the best person I've ever met in my life. Aww. Best person. I feel like Janet was like a huge part of me in training. Mm -hmm. um, Janet saw so much more to me than what everyone else saw. Mm -hmm. Like everyone saw this like... I feel like she has a sixth sense about that. Yeah, she saw... Everyone else saw this like dancer girl that I would have to come in with full makeup because I would have to go to a gig afterwards, like a dance gig. Okay. And they're like, who is this girl with like curled hair and like a full beat? <laughs> How many people were in your group? We had like 36. Oh wow. Yeah, we had, a, we had one of the bigger groups back in the day. She looked at me and she pushed me harder than anybody else. And she was just like, I do it because I love you and I do it because I can tell that you're a good person and I can tell that there's things that you've gone through mm -hmm. and people need it. Mm -hmm. And that was the first time I realized like this is so much more than me auditioning for a dance job. Mm -hmm. It was so much more than me trying to land a gig. Mm -hmm. It was like you have an opportunity to use everything that you've gone through to help somebody else. Mm -hmm. And so she taught me that and that's what I use every single day. Mm -hmm. she don't, I don't even think she knows this about her. I would not have guessed that you would have talked about her. I know. She she kind of tore me up in, in training. Love you. She's like untouchable to me. Oh, I'm just like, I was like in awe. At everything she said and did, the outfit she showed up in, the way she did, like during lecture, I was just like, this <laughs> woman is so comfortable in her own skin, oh. exactly who she is, does not give a fuck, and I respect the hell out of her. She went time in, in drills. No one else had oh, to do drill this. Day. Oh it was in, not even the drill day. It was in front of everyone. Oh my god! Okay. Um, we were doing the arms, and she came up to me and she said, "Share, I want you to do arms and talk about the sun." Okay. I was like, "Okay." And so she turns the music on. I have a microphone on. I'm talking, and I just like go on like this idea of like the sun in like Brazil and like going into these places. And she just like up and she's like, <laughs> "Sit down." And I was like, next, next. And she's like, you're done. Thank you so much. And I was like, I guess that was, that was good. That was good. All right, sounds good. Oh my God, that's amazing. All right, so last question. But do you just have one message that you want to spread? You want to like bring awareness? To, like one thing that you maybe like stand for that? Um, I think I my biggest. I was like, she she goes on like Instagram story, like not rants, but like you tell it how it is. And that's, yeah. You keep it real. So like, um, what is it? I, my biggest purpose is to like change the perspective of positivity because I think we are in a world where it's like this manufactured perfect package that positive people have to be this upbeat cheery like my voice needs to be three octaves higher and like that's the only way that you're going to think that I'm positive and you're going to receive a message and I'm like no sometimes positivity can be grounded and be real and it can involve problems um, but also involve a solution. So I just want to change the idea of positivity and let it be real and authentic and something that's mm -hmm. tangible. Yeah. Um, my biggest fear is that people are positive, but because they don't match up to what society believes is positive, they think that they're a bad person. Mm -hmm. And like, that's not healthy. Mm -hmm. And so I just want to change that perspective mm -hmm. and like have people look at life in a different way and just be happy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. People to be happy. I, that's a, yeah. I feel like that's that's you. Yeah. Good vibes only, like good vibes positive. Only. Yeah. Positive and it's like vibes, I'm, like everything. Right. It's like I always joke, like, and I'm sarcastic, but I'm like, I promise you that I'm positive. I promise you that like mm -hmm. everything that I'm giving you is is genuine, and I I don't say anything. But I, I feel mean. like it always comes from a good place yeah. too. My biggest motto is I don't ever say anything that I don't mean. So if yeah. I'm telling you the words that I love you, I mean it. Mm. If I tell you something like. A small critique I mean it mm -hmm. um, and it comes from a place of like I care about you mm -hmm. I give a shit about you mm -hmm. and like I just want you to live up to the greatness that you already right. have yeah I totally like I feel like if you know anything about Cheryl like that's that's you yeah she's caring like that's it you're caring you're cool like you're Cher you know she's Cheryl <laughs> I know nobody ever really knows their full name that's the funniest thing I was a Cher share your soul so with that being said i will tag everything about share down below you will follow her please watch her instagram stories it is a fun time
Take your class if you're in DC, if you're visiting DC, good vibes, seriously. Cher was a huge help to me when I was trying to get into the training program, like always willing to talk to me, always willing to help me, which is just like, is a testament to the type of person that she is, that she's talked about, like her character. Even now, if I'm like, I have hip hop, like, um, like theme writer, like help me, she'll like, always send me music. Like I'm using that star ship, whatever. Uh -huh. I'm gonna keep an eye Eminem tonight. Like it's good. It's hard to find an adult oh. one, but that's like a nice long situation. I'm like good little six minute song. Have yeah, fun. there we go. Um, but yeah, that's just like share. So thank you so much for doing thank this. You for I'm so me. excited for you guys to get to know her a little bit more. Like I said, take her class, follow her. She is a light. She is the best. And I'll see you guys for the next episode. Okay. Thanks, Bye. guys. <laughs> Um, <laughs> gather myself a whole recruit email. I took my very first. <laughs> what is that? Oh, it's the oh, okay. like, Um, So I can be knowledgeable. Do we want to? I'm. Let's, let's, let's check that. We're trying so much for out loud. I, I don't like saying my age anymore. After 25, I was like, ugh. Like, I'd rather say 30. When I was 25, I was like, oh my god, I'm 25. And it's like, you know, 26 just sounds awful. Like, I'm like, are you getting pregnant soon? We just ride bikes, you know. Hi, <laughs> um, Alex. Hi. We can get that. Okay, well, nice I'm, I'm filming Hello. something. This is Callie. Hi. Hi, Callie. How are you doing? Good. How are you? CB, you got to keep that mouth closed when we're recording shit, okay? Okay. Love you. <laughs> you are you too. I'm like, what's going on? I spell it with an E because I don't want to be called Char. Yeah, I'd be like, Char. Right. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Char broiled. I'm not Char broiled. <laughs> I'm Cher.